Wilkes-Barre Scranton International Airport IATA AVP ICAO KAVP FAA LID AVP is primarily in Pittston Township Pennsylvania and spans the border between Luzerne County and Lackawanna County It is owned and operated jointly between the two counties and it is located approximately 7 miles away from Scranton and 8 miles away from Wilkes-Barre it is the fifth largest airport in Pennsylvania measured by passenger boarding and calls itself, Your Gateway to Northeastern Pennsylvania and the Pocono Mountains. This is the primary airport of Northeast, Northeast Central PA and of the Wyoming Valley. Topic History In the 1930s, the largest cities in Northeast Pennsylvania began to recognize the need for a mile wide airport as the country entered the age of mass air transportation. Despite the crippling depression and hard times affecting the local coal mining industry, a windfall multi-million dollar opportunity to plan and build a regional airport was presented to Luzerne and Lackawanna counties through their Public Works Administration. It became apparent that a modern airport would be needed for the economic survival of the region. The site in Avoca was first surveyed in 1939 by the county commissioners' boards of both counties. In 1941, John B. McDade, Congressman Joseph M. McDade's, whose name is on the current terminal building, father and president of the Heidelberg Coal Co., donated 122 acres on which part of the airport now sits. Most of the land was previously owned by various coal companies. Many U.S. airfields built in the World War II era were motivated as much by military defense as they were by commercial aviation. The government funded construction of many airfields to develop a network that could be used by military planes if needed. The proponents of a large bi-county airport continued their efforts in the early 40s until late in 1944, when they succeeded in receiving a last-minute commitment from the Administrator of Civil Aeronautics of the United States Department of Commerce, with the approval of a board composed of the Secretaries of Navy, War, and Commerce that designated the project as necessary for national defense. Early in 1945, the two counties entered into a legal agreement to co-sponsor and operate the airport. During the negotiations on site selection and the bi-county operation plan, it was agreed that Scranton, the larger city and alphabetical first and closest in mileage should have second billing in name, since Luzerne County had the largest population, thus the Wilkes-Barre, Scranton Airport was named. Construction of the airport took place from 1945 to June 1, 1947, when the Wilkes-Barre, Scranton Airport was dedicated with fanfare. The debut commercial passenger service for the region was witnessed by hundred in attendance. Colonial Airlines and American Airlines were the first two airlines at the airport. In April 1948, Transcontinental and Western Air later TWA started service, along with all American Airways later Allegheny Airlines in June 1949. Colonial provided Montreal, Syracuse Philadelphia, Washington and intermediate stop service, American provided Chicago, Buffalo New York service, TWA provided Kansas City, Pittsburgh Albany, Boston service, and All American provided a general interstate service and later a looping network to Newark, Atlantic City Washington, and around again through Pennsylvania. The first aircraft type here, operated by all four carriers, was the DC-3, a 21-passenger airplane weighing about 25,000 pounds, which cruised anywhere between 155 to 165 miles per hour. The airport was granted international status in 1975 when cargo flights to Canada began. Besides regional airline flights, the airport has had many celebrity visitors. Air Force One has landed with Bill Clinton, George W. Bush and Barack Obama for fundraisers and campaign trips throughout northeastern Pennsylvania. A charter plane carrying Hillary Clinton used the airport during her presidential campaign in 2008. In August 2013, President Obama and Scranton native Vice President Joe Biden visited the region for a campaign event. President Donald Trump also visited the airport in 2017. In May 2006 the airport completed an $80 million new terminal and garage. The terminal, designed by HNTB, has jetways, a larger waiting area, more gates and a shopping and dining area. A new control tower and Traken facility opened on August 29, 2012 and was paid for with $13.3 million from the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009. The old tower's view of the second runway had been blocked due to the construction of the new terminal. 
All 25 controllers stayed on to work in the new facility. In 2015, there was a one off international charter flight for an all inclusive vacation from AVP to Freeport in the Bahamas. If the load factors were high enough, additional flights to Freeport, and possibly other international destinations, could be scheduled in the future. On June 24, 2016, Commuter announced the purchase of approximately 40 Embraer ERJ 145 from ExpressJet that would eventually replace the Bombardier Q200, Bombardier Q300, which are currently used for flights to Newark Liberty International Airport for United Airlines. On November 19, 2016, American Airlines announced that they would add three additional flights from the Wilkes-Barre, Scranton International Airport to Charlotte. On December 15, 2016 Dunkin' Donuts opened a location next to Lucky's Craft Food and Drink, near the security checkpoint on the airport's second level. On May 18, 2017, demolition began on the former airport terminal next to the new one that was built in 2006. By the end of 2017, American Airlines and United Airlines both hoped to end their use of the Bombardier Dash 8 aircraft as these turboprops are replaced by jets. On April 24, 2018, the Wilkes-Barre Airport moved the security checkpoint, a million-dollar project that places the Lucky's Craft Food and Drink Restaurant and Dunkin' Donuts past security. The airport is currently working on a project to place a kiosk on the lower level near the baggage carousel. United Airlines announced several schedule changes. On October 3, 2018, the airport will stop connecting passengers through the Newark Airport as they shift the flights to Washington Dulles beginning on October 4, 2018. The airline has also announced an additional flight to Chicago O'Hare in the morning. The old terminal was demolished in early 2018. The former site is currently being transformed into a cell phone parking lot and additional parking for airport staff. The airport is referenced in the 1990 film Home Alone and in The Office. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Former carriers. All American Airways renamed to Allegheny Airlines, then to US Air, and finally to US Airways before merging with American Airlines. Colonial Airlines 1947 to 1956 merged with Eastern Airlines Eastern Airlines 1956 to 1991 bankruptcy TWA 1948 to 1966 Vacation Express March 11, 2003 to September 7, 2004 Hooters Airlines October 26, 2005 to March 26, 2006 Allegiant Air June 21, 2012 to January 4, 2018. Topic: United Airlines's Newark flights. United Airlines announced several schedule changes on October 3, 2018. The airport will stop connecting passengers through the Newark Airport as they shift the flights to Washington Dulles beginning on October 4, 2018. For years, the flights from AVP to EWR was scheduled to depart around 1 p.m. and towards the end of 2016 it was changed to a 6 p.m. departure. Numbers dropped dramatically as connections were very limited and the flight was delayed constantly due to air traffic control. AVP is the last regional airport in Pennsylvania to have flights to EWR. Pittsburgh International Airport is the only airport in Pennsylvania that offers flights to Newark. Air show The Wilkes-Barre, Scranton International Airport was the host of a major air show between 1983 and 2000. The show was temporarily suspended due to construction of a new terminal, however, it was expected to return after construction was completed. Later that year, reports said the planned renovations to the airport would leave no room for the air show. In early 2017, the Bi-County Airport Board unanimously approved hosting the Northeastern Pennsylvania Air Show at the Wilkes-Barre, Scranton International Airport from August 12-13 of 2017. The show, back after a 17-year absence, will feature several acts U.S. Army Golden Knights Parachute Team U.S. Air Force Heritage Flight Team F-22 Raptor Demo Team U.S. Navy F-A-18 TAC Demo Team it was announced that the airshow would return in 2019, where 
The U.S. Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron, known as the Blue Angels, tentatively are scheduled to perform at the air show May 25 and 26 in 2019. Facilities The airport covers 910 acres 368 hectares and has two asphalt runways 4 20 seconds 7501 times 150 feet 2286 times 46 meters 10 28 4300 times 150 feet 1311 times 46 meters general aviation is serviced by the fixed base operator FBO aviation technologies topic U.S. Customs and Border Protection The Bureau of U.S. Customs and Border Protection has a property located on airport grounds. The property is located on the FBO side of the airport near the hangars. This U.S. Customs Service office serves as a facilities and crossings for Harrisburg's port of entry. Topic customs Even though the airport currently does not have any scheduled international service, the airport has a location to process international flights. The facility is located on the lower level near gates 1 and 2, where the airport can isolate the international passengers from the domestic passengers. With advance notice, the airport can process international flights that are either scheduled or flights that have diverted to AVP. Topic terminal The Wilkes-Barre, Scranton International Airport has one passenger terminal with eight gates. Gates 1 and 2 are located on the lower level, while gates 3 through 8 are located on the second floor. Gate assignments, American Eagle, 2, 3 and 5 Delta Air Lines, 4 and 6 Southern Airways Express, 1 United Express, 1, 7 and 8 Gate 7 is the gate used for charter flights and diversions. Gates 1 and 2 were used by American Eagle and United Express for their turboprops. Since they transitioned to jets, these two gates are not used daily. Jets are parked here if all the other gates are being used or for diversions. <laughs> <laughs> Airlines and destinations Passenger Topic Cargo Topic Statistics Topic Top Destinations Topic Annual Traffic Topic Ground Transportation Topic Car The airport has direct access to I eighty one. The Pennsylvania Turnpike can be also be accessed from I-476. Topic: <inaudible> Bus. The Luzerne County Transportation Authority offers route number 17 from the airport to Wilkes-Barre and surrounding cities. Topic: <inaudible> Taxi and car rentals. The airport's main taxi service is call a car taxi. The airport is also served by Burgett City Taxi and McCarthy Flowered Cabs. Uber and Lyft have specific pickup locations in front of the airport on the arrival side of the airport. The following rental car companies provided their services at Wilkes-Barre, Avis, Budget, Dollar, Enterprise, Hertz and National. Topic: <laughs> Accidents and Incidents. The Wilkes-Barre, Scranton International Airport is within miles of all three large New York airports and because of this the airport is a popular location for diversions. On April 20, 1985, AFS or 
Number 62-4496, a USAF CT-39A experienced brake failure on landing at the Wilkes-Barre Scranton International Airport, killing all five passengers and crew aboard, including General Jerome F. O'Malley, Commander, Tactical Air Command, and his wife. Bear Creek Township was the site of a plane crash of an Executive Airlines Jetstream 31 airplane which had been chartered. On May 21, 2000, it crashed while attempting to land at the Wilkes Barre, Scranton International Airport. As described by the BBC, the crash occurred in a wooded area of the township, near the intersection of Bear Creek Boulevard PA Route 115 and the northeast extension of the Pennsylvania Turnpike. The accident killed the pilot as well as all 19 passengers. NTSB investigation ruled that the crash was probably due to low fuel. The incident spurred an FBI investigation and made news across the globe. Passenger safety in the aviation field became a major issue of the 2000 U.S. presidential election. On January 7, 2011, Delta Air Lines flight number 4061 had to return to the gate when the pilot realized, after takeoff, that the nose gear would not retract. On November 1, 2013, U.S. Airways Express flight number 4394 that took off from the Philadelphia International Airport and was heading to Albany International Airport made an emergency landing due to smoke being discovered in the cockpit. Twelve passengers and three crew members were on board and no injuries were reported. On February 25, 2014, a U.S. Airways flight from New England to Philadelphia was diverted Tuesday morning, when cockpit lights indicated a mechanical issue. Forty-two passengers and three crew members were on board, and no injury were reported during the emergency landing. On April 1, 2016, a Virgin America Airbus A320 landed at AVP due to high winds and bad weather in the New York area. The plane took off from Los Angeles International Airport and was scheduled to land at John F. Kennedy International Airport. On September 6, 2016, a United Airlines flight had to make an emergency landing after the pilot reported a fuel imbalance. On February 26, 2017, an American Eagle flight number 4858 from Wilkes-Barre to Philadelphia International Airport had to return to AVP after a landing gear failure. There were no injuries reported. On July 11, 2017, a private plane traveling from Morristown, NJ to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania had to make an emergency landing at AVP due to a landing gear failure. According to news outlets. They tested the landing gear, flew in front of the tower, and the tower advised them it was not locking in place so the pilot made the decision to land on our runway, which he did successfully," airport president Carl Beardsley said. The airport was closed for about an hour and a half while crews cleared the scene. No injuries were reported. A Delta flight had to be rerouted due to the airport closure. 